Introduction Reproduction is the basic biological process by which organisms give birth to new organisms similar to themselves. Every living organism is the result of reproduction. The many known modes of reproduction are generally classified into sexual and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction needs the involvement of two individuals of opposite sex. During sexual reproduction, the female produces eggs which will be fertilized by the spermatozoa released by male. An embryo is formed which develops into adult. Generally, higher complex organisms practice this method. During asexual reproduction, an individual can reproduce without the help of any other member of that species. Generally, lower, less complex organisms practice this method. Objectives At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to Highlight the importance of reproduction. Describe the modes of reproduction in animals. Compare the merits and demerits of sexual and asexual reproduction. Characterize the human reproductive organs. Mention the types of fertilization in animals. Differentiate oviparous and viviparous animals. Illustrate the process of in vitro fertilization. Explain the phenomenon of cloning. Human reproductive system. Male. In males, the sex organs or genitals are located both inside and outside the pelvis. The male genitals include the testicles or testes. In a boy who has reached sexual maturity, the two testicles or testes produce and store millions of tiny sperm cells. The testicles also produce hormones including testosterone. Testosterone is that hormone that causes boys to develop deeper voices, bigger muscles and body and facial hair and it also stimulates the production of sperm. The duct system. Alongside the testicles are the epididymis and the vas deferens, which make up the duct system of the male reproductive organs. The vas deferens is a muscular tube that passes upward alongside the testicles and transports the sperm containing fluid called semen. The epididymis is a set of coiled tubes, one for each testicle, that connects to the vas deferens. Scrotum the epididymis and the testicles hang in a pouch-like structure outside the pelvis called the scrotum. This bag of skin helps to regulate the temperature of testicles which need to be kept cooler than the body temperature to produce sperm. The scrotum changes size to maintain the right temperature. When the body is cold, the scrotum shrinks and becomes tighter to hold in body heat. When it is warm, the scrotum becomes larger and more floppy to get rid of extra heat. The accessory glands. The accessory glands, including the seminal vesicles and the prostate gland, provide fluids that lubricate the duct system and nourish the sperm. The urethra. The urethra is the channel that carries the semen to the outside of the body through the penis. The urethra is also part of the urinary system because it is also the channel through which urine passes as it leaves the bladder and exits the body. The penis. The penis is the ejaculatory organ through which the semen would be ejaculated. Human reproductive system, female. The human female has reproductive system located entirely in the lowest part of the abdomen. The external part of the female reproductive organs include the vulva, which means covering, the labia, which means lips, are the two pairs of skin flaps that surround the vaginal opening. 
the clitoris. A small sensory organ located toward the front of the vulva where the folds of the labia join. A female's internal reproductive organs include the vagina, a muscular hollow tube that extends from the vaginal opening to the uterus. It has several functions. For sexual intercourse, as the pathway that a baby takes out of a woman's body during childbirth, and as the route for the menstrual blood, the period to leave the body from the uterus. The cervix, that connects the vagina with the uterus or womb. The cervix has strong, thick walls. The opening of the cervix is very small. During childbirth, the cervix can expand to allow a baby to pass. The uterus, shaped like an upside-down pear, with a thick lining and muscular walls, that contains some of the strongest muscles in the female body. These muscles expand and contract to accommodate a growing fetus and then help push the baby out during labor. The fallopian tubes, two in number, each attached to a side of the uterus. Within each tube is a tiny passageway and at the other end of each tube is a fringed area that looks like a funnel. The ovaries, two oval-shaped organs that lie to the upper right and left of the uterus. They produce, store, and release eggs into the fallopian tubes in the process called ovulation. Human Reproduction, Fertilization Fertilization is the fusion of male and female gametes to produce a new organism. In animals, the process involves a sperm fusing with an ovum, which leads to the formation of zygote. Types of fertilization. In some animal species, the process can occur within the body of the female. This is called internal fertilization. Example, human beings. In some animal species, the process occurs outside the body of the female, which is called external fertilization. Example, frogs and fishes. Human reproduction, development of embryo. As a result of fertilization, a zygote is formed. This carries the genetic information of both its parents, the father and the mother. This single-cell zygote starts dividing repeatedly and develops as an embryo. The embryo at an advanced stage is called fetus. In humans, the fetal stage begins about eight weeks after fertilization when the major structures and organ systems have formed. Viviparous and oviparous animals. Similar to fertilization, development of an embryo may take place outside or inside the body of the parent. Accordingly, they are classified into oviparous and viviparous animals. Viviparous animals are those in which the embryo develops entirely within the mother and not from an egg. Viviparous offspring live independently and require an external food supply from birth. This is the reproductive mode for nearly all mammals many reptiles and a few fishes. Aviparous animals are egg-laying animals. It means there will be little or no development of embryo within the mother. This is the reproductive way of many animals, including birds, amphibians, most insects, many reptiles and fish. One of the advantages to giving birth to live young is that the mother protects the fetus inside her body as it develops. The developing fetus derives nutrients from the mother's body and so is assured of receiving all the nourishment it needs to complete development. Development of the newborn. The development of an animal after its birth or emergence from an egg is not the same in all organisms. Accordingly, they are classified into direct and indirect development. 
Direct Development In some cases, the young one differs from the adult in comparatively minor details, apart from not having functional sex organs. This kind of development is said to be direct. There's no larval stage and no metamorphosis. However, direct development does not mean that no changes occur between birth and adulthood. Human beings are typical examples for this kind of development. Indirect development In some other cases, the newly hatched ones will not be similar to that of its parents. They undergo a rather long route to reach the adult stage. The sequence of stages is called metamorphosis. Amphibians and some insects are typical examples for this kind of development. Asexual reproduction types Budding This is one of the methods of asexual reproduction in most primitive animals like Hydra. In this form, an offspring develops as a bud from the parent body and grows and finally detaches from the parent to develop as a new individual. Binary fission This is yet another mode of asexual reproduction found in unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium, etc. The division starts with the division of nucleus of a parent cell or organism followed by the division of its cytoplasm. The end result will be the formation of two daughter cells or organisms. Apart from these major types, animals undergo a few other modes of asexual reproduction like regeneration, multiple fission, etc. Artificial methods of reproduction In vitro fertilization A test tube baby is the term that refers to a child that is conceived outside the woman's body. The process is referred to as in vitro, outside the body fertilization. Simply put, eggs are removed from the mother's ovary and incubated with sperm with the father. After fertilization, the pre-embryos are allowed to divide two to four times in a test tube, hence the name, and then return to the mother's uterus where they can develop normally. This procedure is one of many artificial reproductive technologies, ART, that are used when conception has not been otherwise successful due to fertility problems or either the mother or father or both. Cloning Cloning is the process by which an entire organism is reproduced from a single cell taken from the parent organism and in a genetically identical manner. This means the cloned animal is an exact duplicate in every way of its parent. Cloning happens quite frequently in nature. Asexual reproduction in certain organisms and the development of twins from a single fertilized egg are both instances of cloning. With the advancement of biological technology, it is now possible to artificially recreate the process of cloning. The DNA nucleus was extracted from an embryonic cell and implanted into an unfertilized egg from which the existing nucleus had already been removed. The process of fertilization was stimulated by giving an electric shock or by some chemical treatment method. The cells that developed from this artificially induced union were then implanted into host mothers. The cloned animal that resulted had a genetic makeup exactly identical to the genetic makeup of the original cell. Since Dolly, of course, it is now possible to create clones from non embryonic cells. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Reproduction is the basic biological process by which organisms perpetuate their own species. There are two modes by which organisms reproduce, sexually and asexually. Both modes of reproduction has their own merits and demerits. 
Human beings reproduce sexually. The males produce sperm while the females produce ova. Fertilization is the union of male and female gametes in sexual reproduction. There are two types of fertilization, internal and external. Zygote is the end product of fertilization. It develops into embryo. At an advanced stage, when organs have developed, it is called fetus. Development of embryo may take place either inside or outside the body of the female. Accordingly, the animals are grouped into oviparous and viviparous. Viviparous animals may develop into adults directly or may cross through a few larval stages before becoming adult. Asexual reproduction is commonly found in lower animals. There are several types. Budding, fission, sporulation, regeneration are a few to be mentioned. Human beings with the help of advanced technology can assist the process of reproduction in infertile humans. In vitro fertilization is one such example of artificial reproductive technology. Cloning is a recent technology where an exact copy of an adult organism can be taken through artificial means. Introduction A natural phenomenon is a non-artificial event in the physical sense and therefore not produced by humans, although it may affect humans, that is, bacteria, aging, natural disasters. Common examples of natural phenomena include volcanic eruptions, lightning and thunder, earthquakes, weather and decay. Most natural phenomena are harmless such as rain. Some natural phenomena such as volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, tsunami and tornadoes are considered dangerous and might lead to death on large scale. Objectives At the end of this lesson you'll be able to understand the phenomenon of lighting, analyze the process of charging by rubbing, list the types of charges and their interaction, explain the working of electroscope, describe the causes of lightning, know the safety measures to be followed during lightning, examine the lightning conductors, recognize the cause for earthquakes, Identify the precautions to be taken during earthquakes. Lightning. You might have seen sparks on an electric pole when wires become loose. This phenomenon is quite common when a wind is blowing and shaking the wires. You might also have seen sparks when a plug is loose in its socket. Lightning is also an electric spark but on a huge scale. Now of course we understand that lightning is caused by the accumulation of charges in the clouds. Charging by rubbing. Bring a plastic comb near some tiny pieces of paper. What happens? Nothing. The comb will not have any effect on them. Now rigorously rub the comb against your hair and bring it close to the tiny pieces of paper. You will notice that the comb attracts the pieces of paper towards itself. This happens not by magic. There is a clear and logical explanation for such an observation. Initially, the comb is electrically neutral, so it has no effect on the tiny pieces of paper. When the comb is rubbed on your hair, it gets electrically charged. This charged comb exerts an electric force on the tiny pieces of paper and attracts them. A glass rod rubbed with a silk cloth and an ebonite rod rubbed with a wooden cloth also acquires the ability to attract small pieces of paper and are said to possess an electric charge. Types of charges and their interaction. Did you ever hear the saying that opposites attract? Well, it's true. Two things with opposite or different charges, a positive and a negative, will attract or pull towards each other. Things with the same charge, two positives or two negatives will repel or push away from each other. Opposite charges attract each other. For example, a positive charge attracts a negative charge. Like charges repel each other. For example, a positive charge 
repels a positive charge and a negative charge repels a negative charge. A charged object will also attract something that is neutral. Think about how you can make a balloon stick to the wall. The electroscope. It is an instrument used to detect and test small electric charges. It works on the principle that like charges repel each other. Uses of an electroscope. Electroscope is used to detect whether a body is charged or not. Touch the brass disc of the electroscope with the given body. If the aluminium leaves diverge, the body is charged. If the leaves do not diverge, the given body is not charged. Lightning. Lightning is an atmospheric electrostatic discharge, spark, accompanied by thunder, which typically occurs during thunderstorms and sometimes during volcanic eruptions or dust storms. From this discharge of atmospheric electricity, a leader of a bolt of lightning can travel at speeds of 220,000 km per hour and can reach temperatures approaching 30,000 degrees Celsius, that is 54,000 Fahrenheit. Lightning safety. It is necessary that we need to ensure safety during lightning. Following other steps to get safe from lightning. Avoid water. Avoid the high ground. Avoid open spaces. Avoid all metal objects including electric wires, fences, machinery, motors, power tools, etc. Lightning conductor. The lightning conductor, which is also known as lightning rod or air terminal, is one of the best known form of shielding device and has been in use in protecting buildings and facilities where protection is mandatory, such as storage tanks for petroleum products, warehouses for explosives, etc. The main purpose of the lightning rod is to provide a point well above the structure to be protected with a very good earthed connection so that the lightning energy gets diverted into ground without damaging the structure. It has no role in preventing a lightning occurrence. Earthing The earthing done for domestic power supply is not at all sufficient for lightning conductor earth. This is evident from the magnitude of currents involved in lightning, which is more than two orders of magnitude higher than the domestic supply currents. However, because of the high voltage involved, proportionally heavy earthing is not needed as the voltage itself will drive it into ground. Cone of protection. This is a term used to describe the volume of protection offered and it provides a simple graphical tool for installing a lightning conductor protection system. Arrangement of a lightning rod showing the cone of protection is given in the figure. Earthquakes The earth is divided into three main layers. A hard outer crust, a soft middle layer and a center core. The outer crust is broken into massive irregular pieces called plates. These plates move over slowly driven by energy forces deep within the earth. Earthquakes occur when these moving plates grind and scrap against each other. The following precautions can be taken to make a safe living. If you are at home, take shelter under a table and stay there till shaking stops. Stay away from tall and heavy objects that may fall on you. If you are in bed, do not get up. Protect your head with a pillow. If you are outdoors, find a clear spot away from buildings, trees and overhead power lines. If you are in a car or a bus, do not come out. Ask the driver to drive slowly to clear spot. Do not come out till the tremors stop. Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Some objects can be charged by rubbing with other objects. There are two kinds of charges, positive charge and negative charge. Like charges repel and unlike charges attract each other. The electric charges produced by rubbing are called static charges. When charges move, they constitute an electric current. An electroscope may be used to detect whether a body is charged or not. 
The process of transfer of charge from a charged object to the earth is called earthing. The process of electric discharge between clouds and the earth or between different clouds causes lightning. Lightning strike could destroy life and property. Lightning conductors can protect buildings from the effects of lightning. An earthquake is a sudden shaking or trembling of the earth. Earthquake is caused by a disturbance deep inside the earth's crust. It is not possible to predict the occurrence of an earthquake. Earthquakes tend to occur at the boundaries of earth's plates. These boundaries are known as fault zones. Destructive energy of an earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. The earthquake measuring seven or more on Richter scale can cause severe damage to life and property. We should take necessary precautions to protect ourselves from earthquakes.